Here is another roof framing project for our 625 square foot house where we are going to add four Dutch roofs to it, one on each side. And this is a method I found in some of my older roof framing books. I have roof framing books back to the 1800s that I use for some of my research. And this is going to be built on top of a hip roof. And the beauty about this is that all of the framing components for one section can be used for the other sections. So these roof rafters right here, along with the fascia board, the ridge, the lookouts, and even the gable studs can all be the same. And that's actually how I built this project here. Next up, let's go ahead and add one of the sections, zoom in on it here, so that we can take a look at how everything is going to be attached and fastened together. Now we are going to have a one inch gap between the bottom of the fascia board and the top of the roof sheathing. And the reason for that is so that we can install the roofing shingles underneath the fascia board. And the measurement here will vary depending upon the roofing materials you're going to use. For example, if I'm going to use composition roof shingles, I might only need a three quarter inch space. But if I'm going to use a heavy clay tile, I might need three inches or four inches between the top of the sheathing and the bottom of the fascia board. And our gable studs will be shaped something like this and will be sitting on top of a shaped 2x4. If you need this to be supported a little better, then make sure that you use a 2x6. I think that this will be just fine. And I do have 2x4 rafters for everything here, along with 2x4 gable studs and 2x4 lookouts. 2x6 fascia board. And I went ahead and extended this to go beyond this point here and go in back of the roof rafter so that I could attach this to the roof rafter. That might not be necessary. And if you need more information about building this, let me know in the comment area. I consider this to be advanced roof framing, and I'll be glad to provide more information on that, like step-by-step -step instructions, if there are at least 100 people interested in it. So let us know in the comment area. But other than that, if I don't see a lot of interest in it, then I'm not going to worry about it. And we have a 2x6 ridge. You want your ridge to be long enough so that it will have full support for the roof rafters. And then I'm going to put a gable stud underneath the roof ridge to help support it. However, you will need to move this over a little bit if you're going to put a gable vent here. And I do have examples of that in other videos. And a lot of my home building projects like these can be found by clicking on the home building tab at the website. And then on that web page, you should come across something that says home building projects. So make sure that you check those out if you're interested in looking at more roof framing, wall framing, floor framing, stuff like that. And of course, everything is going to blend in nice and flat, nice and straight on the same plane. Next up, let's go ahead and add the other sections here so you can get an idea how they're going to blend in. So all of the jack rafters or fill rafters will connect to the hip. However, something like this can be built on top of the roof sheathing. If it's going to be easier for you, install the roof sheathing all the way up to the top. Just make sure that there are holes cut in the roof sheathing underneath the Dutch roof framing for ventilation. You've got to be able to have air circulating in this area. And if I was going to build something like this, I would install this roof sheathing first, even though it might create a problem for nailing this rafter here at the bottom. And if that was going to be the case, I would just make sure that I installed these rafters all the way around the perimeter. So that would be eight rafters and then install the roof sheathing so that it would make it easier for you to work on this project. Because it's often difficult to build something like this standing on the roof rafters. Nice and straight ridge there. So again, all these framing components, this rafter here, same as this one. And this one here is the same as this one all the way up. And then the ridges would be the same length also. And the last thing I want to look at will be this piece right here. If you can avoid nailing it until after the roof shingles have been applied, the roofer will greatly appreciate it. And I'm not about to suggest the roofer won't be able to build this without having access to this area, but it will definitely help. And next up, let's take a look at something you might actually find in Holland or the Netherlands or the Netherlands, however that is pronounced. And keep in mind that it will usually be built out of brick or block and not wood framing. 
and you can divide it up into a variety of different sections. I divided it up into five sections here. And they can also be higher than I have it here or just a little bit lower because you're not going to want to see the roof. And in some cases, you're not going to want to see the side fascia board either. And to fix this, all you need to do would be to extend the wall framing out a little bit or bring the roof framing in a little bit to hide the fascia board. So let's go ahead and remove the roof trusses so we can get a better look at the wall framing. And this is actually a design that I like, even though it seems like something you would find in the Old West in one of the old Western movies for the general store. And one way will be to use 4x4s. I went ahead and used 4x4s at the brakes here to provide a little stronger connection here. And you might consider using 2x6 for a wall like this. In our example, we're using 2x4. And you might be able to get away with nailing a block here instead of running a full length stud all the way down to the ground. And of course, you could do it over here also. And the difference in height between the walls is 24 inches. However, yours could be a little taller or shorter depending upon your roof pitch. I think we have about a 4 and 12 roof pitch here. And if it was going to be a 6 and 12 roof pitch, then there could be a 3 foot height difference in the walls. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof trusses. I wanted to give you an idea. I'm going to have a nailer board here. So we're not going to have a roof truss going up against the wall here. However, this ceiling backing board might need to float with the ceiling because it could cause the roof truss and the ceiling to lower a little bit. So we're going to nail this board to the wall framing. And then once we nail our sheathing to this board here, that's going to give us a nice strong connection here between the roof and the wall framing. Next up, let's head down to the corner here. Now I just took one of the trusses apart here. You don't have to frame it like this. That corner can be framed differently. And I don't know for sure if you're going to have to fire block this section of the wall framing. You might need to, depending upon the location of the wall. For example, if it's going to be located in the front of the building and there's a parking lot in the front of the building or a large yard, you might not need to fire block it. However, if this is situated next to another building, maybe five feet apart from it, then you might need to fire block it to make sure that that other building doesn't catch on fire when this building's burning down. Which brings me to another point I like to mention in my videos. Check with your local building department and engineers to verify the information in videos like these. Next up, let's take a look at the fascia board. And this isn't going to be real common. You're usually not going to have a section of the roof coming off of the side of a stepped gable. The stepped gable is usually going to extend a little further past. But I went ahead and did this anyway just to provide you with another example of something you might be able to do. Something that might work for your project. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing. Again, you can see once we nail the sheathing to this backing board here, and that backing board is nailed to the wall framing studs, we're going to get a pretty good connection. Next up, let's go ahead and install a 1x4 for our Z-bar backing. This will help with the roof flashing. And I'm pretty sure I have other videos on Z-bar installation. And another reason why you might consider extending the height of the wall here would be to prevent the people standing in front of the building from viewing an obnoxious air conditioning, condensation unit, or other things that might be on top of the roof. And I really don't know the reason why this was popular in Holland. And maybe it had something to do with the bricks, using bricks instead of lumber. And an example of the fire blocking here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can see it's going to go all the way across here. And then let's go ahead and take a view of it from the inside. This will prevent a fire from the inside here from pulling fresh air from the attic into the room below and also prevent the fire from entering into the attic through the wall framing. Another thing you will need to check, like I said, with your local building department. Now you can always install a strap here or another type of framing connector to connect the top plates to the post here or to connect the top plates to the wall framing studs if you're not going to be using a 4x4. And next up let's take a look at another design. 
that will provide you with the basics for Dutch roof construction, not the assembly of the roof. However, if there is enough interest in the video, I will definitely make a step-by-step -step instruction video on how to build this. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that a Dutch roof is not that much different than a gable roof. We're going to be using common roof rafters, ceiling joists, and lookouts to support our fascia board. And we will be adding two small hips with some fill rafters to create the lower section of the Dutch roof. And even though most do-it-yourselfers are going to need a little more information about this type of construction, some of you can actually just look at the video if you understand a little bit about roof framing, enough to where you can cut a common rafter, a hip, and some fill rafters. And these are the fill rafters right here, also called jack rafters. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at it here. Here we have our lookouts. I'm just going to kind of zoom around here to provide you with a few more perspectives. And then we will go ahead and take this section of the roof apart so that we can put it back together. So basically for a Dutch roof, we're going to have a setback or a measurement where the longer common rafters will be starting. And in this method here, I'm going to be using a doubler. You can always install a beam. And then I'm going to be installing gable studs on top. And these gable studs will be used to support the ledger for the shorter common rafters, as well as create a wall so that we can attach our stucco or siding or other wall finish materials to it. And this ceiling joist right here might need to be smaller. In this video here, I'm using 2x8s. And depending upon the pitch or the setback, you might need to use a 2x6 or a 2x4. Or even change the directions and run them perpendicular from this ceiling joist here to make it work. And I do have other examples of Dutch roof framing at our website. And you're probably going to find them in the garage building section. And you can see here where the ridge supporting stud is not going to be full bearing on the doubler. You could always install this doubler on the other side of the roof rafter and then put a fill board in between it, maybe a 2x4, to provide you with a little more structural support. But I really don't think that's going to be necessary to provide you with a little more structural support. Or you could always run a 2x4 base for the framing plate like you would do down here for the wall framing. And there are other ways to build the Dutch roof. I am also going to be providing other examples of that. Unless, of course, there isn't much interest in the video. Next up, let's go ahead and attach the ledger. We're going to be using a 2x10. And to find the height of the ledger, all you need to do is place a common rafter over here, grab a block, and then line everything up. Mark the top of the block like you would the ridge and then do the same thing on the other side. And of course, if I was you, I wouldn't nail the heck out of the ledger and tell you place a few common rafters in there to make sure that everything is fitting OK. So again, this part of it right here is just a bunch of common rafters. And I would like to say is easier, but I know that at one time this was difficult for me to do. And even though that was over 40 years ago, I still remember the difficult time I had figuring out some of this construction stuff. So don't feel bad if this doesn't make a lot of sense. I get you. Next up, let's go ahead and install our hips. Now I want to show you here how this little section ties together. And you can see here where this part of the hip right here is blending into this section of the common roof rafter. This line lines up with this edge here, and that will allow the sheathing to work out OK. However, this really isn't. So this is probably going to be the key spot for you to focus on, because you can see here where this is a little higher or a little lower. So I just kind of wanted to show you that. I know a lot of people get confused when it comes to installing a hip at the top and the bottom and making everything blend in. And again, I get it. At one time, I had a difficult time with that. And I also want to point out that the bottom part of the hip rafter, we're going to be using a 2x10 here for our hip, 2x8 for the rafters. And it won't always be full bearing ever. Most building engineers accept this as a common construction method. Then we're going to install our jack rafters or our fill rafters. 
another construction term that can be confusing because we have so many different terms that we use in different areas that mean the same thing. And here's a nice view of the ceiling joist where it would need to notch a little bit to have the hip work out okay. And if the hip was going to be larger or the ceiling joist was going to be larger, you could see again where we could have a problem here. And then, of course, I held the ceiling joist back a little bit so that we could run our blocks through. You can always run the ceiling joist over to the edge of the wall framing and then butt the blocks against the ceiling joist. And I believe the minimum that a ceiling joist can sit on top of a beam or wall framing is an inch and a half. Here we're going to have two inches. Next up, let's go ahead and install our shaped blocks. And you can see here where we have an angle at the top so that we can create a nice perimeter connection to the roof sheathing and basically through the wall framing. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at some drywall backing blocks that you might need to install if you're going to be installing drywall. Another common method used to create a section of the building we can actually nail the drywall to. Just make sure that the blocks are strong enough. Most people use screws nowadays for drywall. However, years ago when I would install these blocks myself and then go to nail them with drywall nails, I would often move the blocks as I was hammering my nail into them, especially if it was a hard block or I hit a knot. So make sure that they are firmly secured. Next up, let's go ahead and install our lookouts for the fascia board. Then we can throw our fascia board on there. And what comes after the fascia board? The roof sheathing. Let's go ahead and throw that on there and then start wrapping this video up with the last thing I'm going to point out. And that would be to make sure that you leave enough room between the bottom of this section of the fascia board and the top of the sheathing so that you can install your roof shingles underneath the fascia board. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.